say hello to everyone. What's up, guys? We are here doing our Ask Us Anything Q&A, basically just to get back on YouTube and uh, kind of break the ice with you guys again. <laughs> <laughs> For that reason right there. Yeah, so I guess we're just gonna talk about what we've been up to. Austin probably can talk about his England trip a little bit. Yeah, so um, I spent a little over four months in England. Um, I got back right at the Christmas holiday um, great trip, 10 different countries, awesome, awesome deal. Um, and not a lot of training while I was over there, uh, just to let you guys know, about two or three times a week at most, about 45 minutes a piece each workout, nothing too extensive. Um, it was a good time off and uh, I'll actually be writing an article um, soon about that, so um, stay tuned on Instagram for my post about that. But uh, we're gonna get into the Q&A here. Um, I was just getting jacked the entire time he was over there. So. Yeah, he was just getting mamma over here. <laughs> he thinks. Okay, so um, do you have a question that you wanted to start with? or? Um, Good feedback, by the way. Thank you guys yeah, for the question. Appreciate you guys reaching out and asking questions. Um, we can start with Brady asked, what are your individual goals and campus physique goals for the year? Um, individual goal is, well, I know for myself and Alex, we're not competing this year. Um, we're taking the entire 2016 off um, from any shows or anything like that. Um, and what we want to do is just uh, grow and develop um, physically and mentally um, and emotionally. Uh, so that's what we're doing this year. Um, those are our big goals. Uh, mine's to get even closer to graduating from school. Hopefully that happens soon. Uh, stay tuned for that too. Uh, who knows that ever? That might not yeah. ever happen. Uh, but that's that's my big goal. Um, and then Alex, um, just grow. Working on your posture. I need to work on my posture actually. Um, it's pretty cool. Grow in the gym, uh, in the classroom. I also am trying to graduate in God knows how many years. Um, so I mean just. Growing myself, focusing on myself, focusing on our clients, um, but just moving towards something better. Yeah, um, majors are, uh, say for the both of us, are exercise science yeah. with a focus in exercise physiology, biomechanics, that sort of thing. Um, that's where our focus is um, in school. So campus physique goals are to just keep growing um, our social media pages, um, and just keep growing our business, uh, helping as many people as we can kind of change their life and compete or do whatever they want. Uh, kind of reach that goal physique and live flexibly that way. So those are our goals that uh, for us campus and campus physique. physique so yep. good question. Um, so we can address, Alex, Alex like this one. And uh, this is a hot topic right now. If any of you guys follow Steve Cook, um, this is from David. Do either of you have any interests in slash opinions on Olympic lifting or CrossFit workouts? Also, has flexibility ever been an issue for either of you, and how did you work on it? Let me start. You can address this, Alex. Okay. Um, I'm not super into CrossFit being the main objective of training. I think it's good use for cardio. Um, I. Personally, like I said, would not want to use it for training, um, but. Yeah, that was my kind of take on it too. Uh, I don't, I don't look at like CrossFit type training, just athletic based training, um, those movements as something I would really put into my uh, uh, training, protocol. training pro protocols, uh, my primary training protocols that I was trying to look for there. Uh, so, in the sense, no. Uh, I do respect Olympic lifting a lot. I respect CrossFit athletes a lot. Uh, that's just not my preferred method of training. So. And with flexibility, we both deal with pretty bad shoulder flexibility. I tore my rotator cuff. He tore. I tore my labrum, which is. And still, the, like still neither of us short. got surgery on either of that. No, so it's pretty bad. It's kind of just dealing with it and doing with doing what we can with what we got. So. Yeah, hip mobility is still pretty rough. Uh, 
So just working on trying to stretch, uh, working on stretching in general after workouts. So we lack at that. We're not very good at that. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, you know that's a flaw of ours that we need to try to address and really fix. So uh, thank you for the question and reminding us to stretch. Uh, you can go. The other question. Um, Jared asked, "How are babies made? How are babies made? <laughs> uh, Do we want to make it, this its own video? This might be its own video, actually. This one. Yeah, we is, may just avoid this one right now. Yeah, this is pretty extensive. I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to. This may it. be a personal message to you, Jared, in a DM from uh, yours truly. Picture message. <laughs> Moving on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. Um, another question from Austin McDuffie uh, addressing what movements are key to a wide back slash Christmas tree action? Well, one that we've gotten away from, I like a lot is the, uh, the hyper extensions with the plated uh, row, I guess you could call it. Do you remember that? For the Christmas tree action? I know he said the width and then he said Christmas tree action. Um, I'd say lower, just lower lumbar strength, um, the muscles throughout that region. I would say just, uh, just, uh, just hyperextension there, um, reverse hyperextension. So, I mean, deads um, obviously. Weighted the... um, deadlifts are a good one. Um, your form and dead, I mean, obviously your form plays into account on kind of where you're displacing the load. Uh, but yeah, deadlifts are a good one. Uh, seal rows are great. Uh, you can go either dumbbell or barbell, kind of what you're able to do at your gym or what you prefer mechanically with your kind of just physiological makeup. Um, so whatever you prefer there. So those are some good ones. Yeah. And, and sprints were, I think, a big part sprints of Sprints are a huge thing. I actually posted a, back I'm actually repost that uh, now that you kind of remind us of that. So I posted a thing a while back. There was an article on uh, T Nation about... Uh, sprinters and kind of the posterior chain are building up strength in the posterior chain of your um, physique so uh, uh, sprints are a huge part of our uh, hit training while we're dieting down for a show so that's one great way to build your back as well and just your overall posterior chain so uh, just to recap again seal rows uh, reverse like reverse hyper extensions uh, weighted I'll obviously work that up. Um, deadlifts, um, DB, roll, DB rows controlled, uh, focusing on contraction uh, there and really staying in that active range of tension. So I would say those are, those are good ones to kind of start with. So thank you, Austin, for that. Um, what are some keys to staying fit in a college environment? He's just saying code fit. Uh, I would say just with anything, just being busy in general is consistency. Uh, have a goal in mind yeah. and stay consistent and stay persistent to that goal. Yeah. So, and surrounding yourself by the right people. Yeah, um, it's all about like, yeah, it's about who you surround yourself with. So, I mean, being if, goal oriented. Yeah, I mean, if Alex wasn't and didn't share my same goals, and I hang out with him every day, or you know, we live together, and he leaves here and goes to you know five guys every, every you know every night after our lifts, and I'm over here like going through a cut or something like that, trying to lose weight or uh, body fat. That's not really going to help me in general. His goals are obviously vastly different than mine, right? Uh, and he just doesn't really you know take into account you know maybe his macronutrient intake where I do. So I just it's kind of who you surround yourself with and staying consistent. Um, having a goal in mind and planning ahead. Planning ahead is huge. Yeah, that's probably the biggest part. You get, you, you get caught up being on campus and everything without meals or anything like that. Yeah. That's where you get in trouble. Yeah, I so. ran into that the other day and it, was, it wasn't it was the most enjoyable thing. So uh, you just have to, when that happens, you just have to kind of just use your wisdom that you've gained over experience over time uh, and make the best choice you possibly can with you know your circumstances. So, yeah, it's, that's a good answer. I think that was a good, good question. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Cody. Uh, Alex Bush asks, 
when is Alex going to grow his calves? Alex? It's happening. Alex, you want to address them? Uh, well, I've been training them pretty consi well, much more consistently than I have in the past. I just want to, I just want to, I want to lay this down on the ground floor here. That I stayed extra last night and did calves while Alex went home and did homework. So if you homework. got, I mean, you guys weigh as the I priorities a, here. As I get a Snapchat of not doing homework. <laughs> That was funny though. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> so that's Alex not growing his calves. Uh, we have a question from Jordan Harris. You know Jordan Harris? Yeah. Played football with him in high school. Yeah. What's up, Jordan? What's up, Jordan? Didn't know you. Still around. How do I work on growing my chest, particularly upper chest? Is it worthwhile to do decline chest exercises? Yes. I think yes. Uh, Lane Norton touched on. I was watching a video uh, of a VIP camp that Lane Norton put on. It was him and uh, Ben Esgrove and all those guys. And they were talking about uh, kind of the activation that you receive during an incline movement versus a decline movement. And if you guys are sitting there right now and you can uh, actually do the movement, you actually get more activation in your throughout your chest in general and especially your upper chest through that decline movement you get better contraction and better recruitment there so uh, again staying through that active range of tension active range of motion so not going too far down to displace the weight to your shoulders so going down far enough to keep the tension on the chest itself and then firing up and contracting focusing on that mind muscle connection and actually contracting your contracting your chest i think yeah you can get um, a greater contraction throughout throughout that upper chest. So, yeah, I would I would definitely put that into your programming. Yeah, and I guess just as far as uh, building your upper chest, focusing on the incline and decline movements, and kind of moving away from the flat bench, maybe for eight weeks, twelve weeks, whatever it is, but emphasizing the the incline and decline movements will be helpful. I mean, I've I've done that for I feel like forever and I'm just now kind of reaping the benefits so yeah um, okay do you have any more questions like we have we have more questions on here but there's a few I want to we got down <laughs> there's a few on here that uh, we want to address by themselves address in their own videos uh, those topics are uh, to kind of just give you guys a hint of what's to come uh, High intensity interval training versus low intensity steady state cardio. Um, and that was asked by Jared. He was basically saying like hit versus list. I know you guys like hit a lot, but is it more effective at fat burning than the other? And actually, yes, one is way more effective than the other. And that was actually a study that was just uh, conducted by Dr. Wilson in his lab uh, down in Tampa. So they're gonna indulge this later. I am indulging. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'm just giving him a, a fluffer. A fluffer. Also, we're going to talk about how flexible should flexible dieting be. Yes. And how flexible are we with flexible dieting. And how strict are we on our caloric intake year round. And, you know, when, when do we take diet breaks and when do we find all that effective. So, um, we're going to touch on those two main topics in separate videos. Uh, and we also, and there's another one for uh, Tanner commented on my picture asking what tricep movements would be beneficial for him after having Tommy John surgery. Um, anybody that doesn't know what that is, it is a surgery to your UCL and your elbow. So we're going to address that by itself. Yeah, so, uh, and just to finish up, just one quick one that I saw at the end here. Uh, David, again, asks uh, forearm training tips. Uh, what's your kind of, what's your favorite exercise for that? So, I would say, honestly, what we get our, what I get my forearm training from, what we get our forearm training from, is uh, search Julian Smith on Instagram. Uh, he's an optimal nutrition athlete insane natural bodybuilder insane, insane. Uh, one of my favorite physiques in the world uh, but that dude's a good follow and he's got a lot of great tips especially on forearm training so 
I would go hit up Julian Smith, definitely. But I think that's gonna uh, wrap this one. That's gonna wrap this one. <laughs> Thanks for the exit, Alex. Yep. Good seeing you guys. We'll be back. Rock on.